Hello everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with ESSEC Business School and we're going to be talking about the Master in Finance, the MIF, in order to talk about this Master. I have the very pleasure to welcome as well, as usual, three guests of honor. The first one, Gérard Despinois, he's the Master in Finance Executive Director and with him two students, uh, a one-year program student, Joachim magdowell Zürcher. Uh, M2 student for the one-year program, and another student, Elisa Gessalin. She is an M1 student for the two years program. Well, the three of them are here to talk about the master and answer my questions. But first, we start with the pitch. Hey. The pitch is a one-minute talk in which, Gérard, you're going to have to tell me everything that we need to know about your, your, the, the MIF. Are you ready? Ready. Then I'm listening. Okay. Our Master in Finance is a highly ranked program in the world, uh, but that's not enough. It's a first mover created in uh, 1985. It is a program that early sent students to top financial institutions in the world. Also, it early moved from a simple advanced master to a fully accredited by the Ministry of Higher Education, uh, which gave us some uh, strong advantages. Also now with 200 students on campus, uh, we have moved from a family type of environment towards an environment which is more open to uh, leverage uh, uh, synergies and economies of scale. And lastly, we are also an early uh, mover having uh, added a FinTech fin track to our traditional corporate finance and financial market track that the competition offers basically. All right, well, we had 10 seconds left, so we're right within the timing. Perfect. Thank you very much. Well, the new, the new specialization fintech, we'll have more time to talk about it through the program. Hey. Before talking about specialization, ESSEC is a very demanding school. Like you said, we are high ranking, but that's not enough. How can a student maximize his chances of being admitted during the admission process? What should a student do? And obviously, I'm going to ask each one of you afterwards. <laughs> Okay, okay. So what I'm seeing always is uh, either do you're the number one or you're different. Okay, so it's uh, very difficult to be the number one because there is only one. <laughs> but it's easy to be different. You have to be at the top, but different. So we have a lot of criteria when we admit students and uh, no, not a single criteria will uh, take you off competition. So that's very important that you have the, some skills that are different uh, beyond being like the uh, top candidate, top students, top schools, everyone will say the same. But we are looking for difference, basically. All right. So what will be your difference then? I think my difference is my bicultural background. So I'm French and German. And I think for me, it really opened uh, my eyes to the world and to be able to, cur to be curious uh, about everything. So I think it will be really important for me for the international side that I have. And it's really a big help in being able to be inside of a, a cohort that is so international and people coming from all over the world. I'm able to adapt to each of these uh, people thanks to this uh, bicultural side of me. All right. So you were, it was not about academic background. It was about who you are and that's... I think so. All right. Okay. What would be your specific skills? I think my differential goes in line with Elisa's as well and also the academic background because I'm a Brazilian Swiss citizen. So I also <laughs> am right, okay. the national and I come from Brazil. So I bring a different point of view than most European students. And I think this is the key factor that I bring to the table. But I also did an exchange in a sec, so uh, they could see how I perform academically. So I also come with a strong academic background. So I think these are my key differentials. All right, so let's, well, each one watching should look for the key differential. Singapore or France, pedagogically speaking, what's the difference, Gérard? That would be the same, mostly because we say one program two campuses. Uh, it depends really on uh, the type of experience you want to have. So what we advise, and you didn't mention something, which is you can do Sergi and then Singapore and the campus exchange or the country. So this is that the type of flexibility that ESSEC offers. So it depends very much where you want to land a job. You know, basically, if you want to a job, land a job in Asia, well, maybe Singapore is better. But if you want to have some Asian flavor, but still have a job, then you do the campus exchange. There is one specificity about Singapore is that we spoke about the fintech track. And the fintech track is actually only given for the time being in Singapore. How, I mean, master in finance, a lot of masters are called masters in finance. 
how is this, the, the MIF unique and different from any other with the same name? Okay, that's a very strong differentiator is that uh, we, are, we are not accredited by the Conférence des Grandes Écoles like most of our competitors. There are very few exceptions among the leaders. We are accredited by the Ministry of uh, Higher Education. And then the way it works is that uh, when you want to get in, you, have, you can have several backgrounds. Either you have like a background where you did a bachelor in three years and you get into the two-year program, or you have a bachelor four years and a master, whatever the master, it can be M1, M2, and then you go to the one-year program. And for us, it, it helps us to be really international. Everyone claims to be international. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you have like abroad, you have programs where uh, in countries where it's important is the three-year program. You will go to Italy, three-year programs are leading the way. Uh, if you go to the UK, three-year programs are very important. If you go to Spain, that may be four-year program in Canada for you. With the, the setting that we have, we can, we can get all the uh, top talents from every country in the world, which yeah, as a result, we didn't pick you for your international background, but it would have been very difficult to do something else. We have, of course, uh, only French, uh, French uh, students, candidates, and it's not that uh, we don't take the good ones, obviously, but that's like a differentiator, basically, and we are very open to different types. Doing the Master in Finance in two years, I think, is also great because you have more time. The key question very often to master in finance is, that, well, you know, in nine months, one year, do you have the time yes, do you. To, 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 to be uh, in finance? If you have some experience before, if you have a, had a, a strong interest in develop personal skills and so on, certificates, then you can do it in one year. But then two years is great for, uh, you know, someone who has la less experience, less background. So it gives more opportunities if you wish to a wider range of candidates. So we've answered the question why uh, ESSEC should pick you. However, why did you choose ESSEC? So I actually chose ESSEC because uh, I did an internship and during this internship my manager uh, told me to go to ESSEC. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he yeah, told me that it was a great school and I would learn a lot. So I looked at the Master in Finance and then I was also convinced once again by the international environment. For me it was really something important. In France, it's kind of rare to have a really international master's with people like it's fully in English. People are coming from all over the world. And I think for me, it's really the best way that you can learn finance or everything possible. It's by being surrounded by people who have different backgrounds, already have some experience, maybe did engineering before, did bachelor in um, international business. It depends. And for me, this aspect was really important. And then I would say also the career service. Um, when you enter a SEC, um, although it's hard to find an internship and find a job, you really support it. Like you have given all the keys in your hands to be able to find a good job and to really find the job you want to do later. Uh, you have really good uh, people coming to you and talk to you, presenting their jobs. You also have the career service, which is really strong and have like strong relationship with the biggest like institution in Paris, in London, in New York, all over the world. And we also have really good alumni who are able to like, talk to you and explain their jobs. So it's all, all in all, all together, it's a really good choice for me. All right, we mentioned the alumni a, a bit later. Yeah. Would it be the same for you? Like some of your know, directors said you should go to a second study uh, master in finance there. So no, because I, I come from Brazil. Right. So, but for me, it was because it comes back to my exchange program that I did in a sec with my university in Brazil. And through that exchange, I could see firsthand how ESSEC offers practical knowledge for students and also acts as a bridge between the students and the companies and the labor market. So since the moment that I knew I wanted to pursue a career in finance internationally and not specifically in Brazil and especially in Europe, I knew that ESSEC would be the place and especially the Master in Finance because it would, it's definitely linking me to the biggest institutions in the world and it's also given me the necessary knowledge to excel in the interviews and start being a good collaborator since day one at the job. So I'm quite happy with my choice. It's also about value and sustainability. You mentioned Singapore and or France. So traveling between Singapore and France does not sound very eco-friendly. <coughs> Do you have any green finance courses or is it more like greenwashing? No, actually, I'm being ironic, obviously. Yeah, sure, sure. No, we have like a very strong uh, strategy, with, which is called RISE at ESSEC. And uh, 
working on uh, sustainability. So the thing is that, for instance, uh, of course, uh, we have campus exchanges and it creates some flights. But at the end of the day, we, we, we have like uh, only uh, maybe 10 percent, 20 percent of the class who, who does it. We try to have like study trips. We have a study trip. We have a school with the most no, highest number of study trips. But we try now to get, to get more into Europe, basically, by train. Usually our competitors go like uh, London, Paris. This is basically where you get jobs. We tend to have like uh, jobs uh, in more places. Okay. So what we try to do is uh, organize our study trip to be more in Europe by train, and we have objectives actually uh, in terms of uh, uh, what we, we what we do in terms of carbon. This is very strongly <laughs> monitored by uh, by um, the, 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 the the general manager. Actually, it's uh, under his direct supervision, so it's important actually. And and and. Two questions. What's the digital workshop competition? How is it linked to finance? Have you participated? In the okay. digital workshop competition, no. But uh, we still didn't have it. But we did have uh, ethical seminars in diversity and inclusion and also sustainability. So basically seeing that it's possible to actually work in finance and still have uh, sustainable um, action. So basically we have a lot of projects nowadays uh, with companies such as Meridium in Paris here that are financing green projects. So basically having a positive impact in the carbon footprint of companies and financing these projects, usually public. And we saw this at first hand during the seminar. And also the importance of not only having an economic output, but also a social and environmental output in each project that you, that you pursue. So I think it's very important for us to, to have this picture as well and not just have a Wolf of Str Wall Street view into finance. <laughs> All right, okay, I get it, I get it. Well, actually, this is something that uh, ESSEC offers. Uh, of course, it's a master in finance. You do a lot of finance courses and the category, of course, I, I don't even know the category, of course, is big because there are <laughs> that many. But what we do, we have like a wide range of masters, uh, master program. What we try to do is to have seminars uh, that gather uh, students from different masters and sustainability, digital, talent leadership, and so on and so on. Because for us, finance is not a, only a technical matter. People will take about technicality of finance. True, there is some mass inside, but at the end of the day, uh, you need to be a good citizen of the world. You will be a leader. If you come from a top school, this is what you aim for, you know, not to be a technician. And you have to be prepared. <laughs> they know it, they know it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be prepared. So we are very much uh, uh, in, encouraged to, to do initiatives like that. And we push the students because the, I know the agenda is quite busy. Uh, but I think it's good to open minds to, to something different and useful for everyone, basically. And the very last question before the cliche. Corporate finance, financial markets, fintech and analytics. How do you help your students to choose? Well, to be frank, first, we look at their motivation at admission. Okay? We don't ask them to choose a, a track, but it comes quite early uh, in the year. Well, for M2 students, basically, because they have a short period of time. So it's, it's better if they have a plan. Two-year students, it's different. We know that they are going to have like uh, something in common. Uh, they will have a lot of uh, courses and they, they will choose later. OK, so basically, for, first answer is really, really, we um, advise students to have an idea. Not say, well, this is the job I want to do and <laughs> with this uh, company, but to have an idea about the track, is, it's good. For me, it's the first point of, about the motivation. You have a plan. Because you know, when you have no plan, you go nowhere, basically. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> At least in, in, a, in a one year program. This is also why the second, the two year program can be interesting for, of course, students who have less experience, bachelor plus three years. So that's a good way also to think about during the, the, the first year. And of course, we, we, what we do, we organize interviews basically face to face for the ones who are hesitant or don't know what to choose. Then we, we organize face to face interviews with uh, program directors or coordinators to explain to, to them a little bit, you know, what, what they can do. But it's rare. Usually, in finance, you need to be motivated to get in. <laughs> All right. Well, like. Jackie mentioned the Wolf of Wall Street. That would be the hell of a financial cliche. And for the other ones, let's move on to the cliche. The cliches are about preconceptions that you might have had when it comes to the finance. The Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort is one of them, obviously. Elisa, what would be yours? I think my cliche would be that there is a lot of competition inside of the masters. So there isn't? There isn't. <laughs> like really, I was kind of uh, stoned that it wasn't <laughs> like this. 
the first thing you said, I remember, at the opening of the Masters was there is room for everyone and you have to help each other. And that's really true. I think we all come from really different backgrounds. We all have very different objectives. We all want to do something different it's in different cities, in different companies. And so we really try to like help each other. It's a lot of work uh, being at the SEC. It's a lot of work to doing the Master in Finance, to do look uh, for a job, an opportunity, an internship. And if we don't help each other, we're going to lose some time and to be way behind people who work hand in hand. So really, there has been a lot of sessions where we all work together, trying to prepare a perfect cover letter, a perfect resume, trying to like read the cover letter of someone else to see maybe if there was something that they didn't understood before sending it. And I think for me, it was really helpful. Uh, within one month, I had like people, like 10 different people reading my cover letter and giving me some tips. And this is something that is fairly rare uh, in the financial environment, I think. So this is a big strength and a cliche that people could have about the masters. All right, thank you for that one, for making that clear. Joachim. Yeah, my cliche from the, for the masters in finance is that you need a very strong mathematical background to enter before entering. Well, you will still do <coughs> math a little bit. Yeah, of course, math is very important <coughs> for finance in general, but ESSEC offers refresher courses in the beginning for everyone that's interesting. So interested, so you have refresher courses in calculus and probability statistics and actually even in accounting as well. So in the end, you don't need to come from a top engineering uh, school, et cetera, to feel at ease doing the master's because you have these courses that mm -hmm. give you the base, the necessary base. So I think this is, a, this is a cliche that's not quite true. All right, so I heard you saying, yeah, so you, was it useful, those, those courses? It was so useful. Like, I didn't have this mathematical background. I did a bachelor in international business. Okay. And so I arrived and I had people who did engineering before really same like helping me out again <laughs> to try to understand all the calculus methodology that I didn't had before and also the teacher was really understanding that people had different levels before and trying to arrange a course that was able to help us to really become better at math really quickly but also think, taking into account our different backgrounds before. Shaha, what would be your cliche? Well, my cliche would be that uh, uh, it's easy to land a top job because, you know, when you look at the facts, it's true that our uh, alum get uh, top jobs. But this is what I uh, tell everyone at the start of the year. It's a long and difficult journey. When you get the access, when you are admitted to the Master in uh, Finance program, well, uh, this is the beginning of a long journey. And uh, you land the top job because first, you, you, you will work hard, you need to have some drive, you need to be resilient. This is a word that I like, the, the, the grit, okay. resilient, okay? And then, of course, we are very well organized, I think, to uh, support the, the, what students have to do to get their jobs. So this is the two combination, but it's uh, really uh, hard work and we can make it happen when the students want to make it happen. And usually it works because we have experience also, of course, in <laughs> supporting our students. But this is no easy life. So that's also one criteria for us is we want to uh, have you know, students who are really resilient, resilient and uh, ready to, to make some efforts. All right, so you don't need to be good at math. You need to be either like gentle, nice to people, to other people, and resilient. And then you can have your seat at the, at the MIF. We mentioned the uh, nationalities. Swiss, Brazilian, German, French, and let's, let's see what's happening abroad with studying abroad. Gérard, you mentioned it, uh, Singapore or France, but that's not it. It's more than Singapore and France. That is the international study trip. Yes, yeah, sure. What mm -hmm. is it about? So we organized like uh, two, three trips actually. One, the first one is to London in the beginning of the year. Uh, because we think that it's very crucial to, to be in London at the beginning of the year. This is where the applications for summer internships, which are like access to top institutions in London, happen. So we visit during a bit less than one week, big, what we call bulge, bulge brackets and elite boutiques. This is very important because then you get knowledge visiting top banks and so on. They give you ins, you are able to network. And this is at the beginning of the year. So this is one. And then we have study trips at the end of the year, well, towards the end of the year. One is in uh, Hong Kong, usually, the other one in, in, in New York. Different aims. That's more for what we call off-cycle uh, internships, either in, uh, mostly in Europe, basically, or, uh, sorry, <laughs> mostly in Asia, or still a little bit in the US, but that's like more difficult because of visa issues. It's more for networking. We visit like uh, top uh, international institutions, a lot of French 
banks and boutiques and also American banks and boutiques. That's also at the end of the year another, um, another idea. This is also to create bonding. Because since the program is quite intense in the beginning, I guess uh, uh, you have time to collaborate, share, and so on. But we want also to create a space where uh, it's a bit more relaxed and not, not party, because it's very well organized. It gives you an ECTS. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, that's the, the thing. Huh? ESSEC is still a serious school. So this is not a question of 100% party, but it's more like also to, to create bonding, basically, with alumni between students. It is that you know where you're going to go? New York. New York? Yes. Why New York? I'm attracted to New York. I don't know why. Um, I've been already in Asia. I was in Singapore. I did an internship there. And it was nice, but I'm more attracted to the US than to New York. Have you, been, have you done the international student trip yet? Or? No, not yet. We're doing it in April. And All right. I'm also going to New York. <laughs> you did London. Yeah, I did London. Yeah, that's true. Actually. That's true. Mm. That's true. So uh, Elisa mentioned how nice the people were and how like, there it was no competition between students. I mean, is there still a student life? I mean, there's being gentle when you are, I don't know, on an academic level, but I mean, we mentioned parties. I mean, Gerard mentioned parties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> is there any kind of parties? Or like, I mean, not Wolf or Wall Street parties, <laughs> but, you, but like, you know, I uh, don't know. Of course, of course, we're collaborative in the academic spectrum, but also in the social spectrum. So we go out to clubs, we go out to restaurants as well. And well, we go sightseeing because most of, most of the people are international students. So we get to know Paris. And I think a great example of that was in the end of last year. We actually went, most of the M2 students, almost all of them, to, to a restaurant to say goodbye to everyone that was going to Singapore and to some M1 students that were with us as well that were going to their internships. So I think this shows a little bit about uh, how, the, how the whole spectrum in the SEC is. So it's quite nice, yeah. Uh, yeah that's one of my questions as well, Elisa. It's like, you have people, I mean, students in Singapore, students in mm -hmm. Paris, mm -hmm. France. Um, do you have contact with each other or yes, is it do. just like if you're in Singapore then like you don't belong to us because it's all <laughs> no. true, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> only Singapore, it's no. like, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? No, no. I think first of all there is a strong relationship between M1 and M2. Um, I know Joachim very well because we at the beginning of the year had this refresher courses that the M2 also have. So I have one intensive month that we all have together. We also saw each other at the library a lot, so yeah. we all know uh, the different people <laughs> in the two years. So that's the first one. And then for Singapore, of course, it's uh, on the other side of the world, so we won't be able to exchange every day. But we have a group, like a collective group um, of all the um, MIF students, where we can exchange, for example, internship opportunities. If there has been some interviews or something that has been done, we can really try to help each other out, even people uh, who are in a Singapore campus. And how do they, I don't know, how do ESSEC help you switch between Singapore and France? How do they help you accommodate? You know, because you're going to have one year, mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know. Could you do like one semester in Singapore yes. and one semester in France as well? Yes, so uh, I'm planning to do this if I can. <laughs> now, uh, it's, now it's official. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it. Um, so the second year in the M2, I can do six months uh, in Paris and do the second six months in Singapore. Actually, there's a lot of M2 students who did it, who have contact yeah. with and who really <laughs> liked it. So I'm trying to do this also. Um, I think uh, how it's organized is that we have the information in November. Yes. November, we know that we are officially able to go to Singapore. Um, the visa situation in Singapore is not that difficult. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, you have to apply. And it like, helps you to like know where to apply and how it, it's organized. But once you apply, you just have to go, take a flight and go there. Accommodation-wise, uh, I would say, um, of course, it's a challenge to find somewhere uh, to sleep for everyone in every city, like in Paris, London, New York, Singapore, every big city, there, it's a challenge. But uh, I know people try to do like a collocation, try to live all together. It's also a great way to bond, and, like create more relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, no one had any problem going to Singapore. So it's great. Yes. Actually, we, we have a service that helps students to find accommodation. So obviously in Sergi, because this is like how our own base, but also in Singapore, mm -hmm. you will get some support from. Okay, great. Yeah, you've known it. You've, you've had it first. Um, <laughs> how is it to be like not? I don't know. I don't know if you speak French. Do you speak French? Do you speak very well French? Uh, very well, I think it's strong to say. <laughs> I, I speak a little bit, yes. How much of, I don't know, for like international students who maybe are wondering, I want to go and study in Paris. You know, they, they watch Emily in Paris and they think <laughs> it's going to be so, so romantic and they want to come and study. How much of French do you need to know? To be honest, you can get around with little French. 
All I right. think if you know how to order a baguette in a boulangerie, you, you'll be fine. And because most of the administrative stuff and bureaucratic stuff, uh, SEC helps you. So as Jihad said, accommodation, they will help you. For Even for the CAF, they will help you. So you have a very strong support from a SEC for an international student. But of course, it's always nice to learn the local language of where you're going. So I do encourage people to try to learn a little bit, use Duolingo or something like this, and you'll get it quite quick. All right, so you don't need to be like specifically bilingual like French. You're going to be in a nice environment. I mean, we've been through some, I don't know, some people like the Wolf of Wall Street, for example. That was one of those. I, I, I like that one. <laughs> um, but for the other ones, let's move on to who am I? Who am I is about personalities, pictures. I'm going to show you and you have to tell me which one, according to you, suits the most for the ESSEC MIF. The three personalities are going to appear on my right. So let's start with uh, let's start with Batman or Bruce Wayne. Why did I pick him? Bruce Wayne, uh, not because like he's a superhero with like a dark personality, but Bruce Wayne donates large sums of money to various charitable causes and funds and funds. Sorry, he uses his wealth in this way to make a positive impact in the city beyond his activity as Batman. And maybe mm -hmm. that's what the MIF does. I don't know. You will tell me about it. In the middle, International Monetary Fund. Obviously, I love puns. Uh, MIF, IMF, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was really good. Thank you nice. for laughing that hard. That was, yeah. Uh, uh, what's the aim of the MIF? Working to foster global monetary cooperation, secure financial stability, facilitate international trade, promote high employment and sustainable economic growth, and reduce poverty around the world. Maybe it could be like with the rice strategy. I don't know. Mm. You will let me know. Mm. And the last one, Molly Bloom. I don't know if you've heard of her in the Molly Bloom in the Molly's Game. She is a former American entrepreneur, author, speaker who became known for her involvement in high-stake poker games. She basically organized oh. poker yeah. game. Mm. Two face of a personality. She's been described as driven, ambitious, determined, and uh, she worked hard to create a successful career in the male-dominated world of poker. We haven't. Talk about that. Is it like a world dominated, uh, a male, sorry, a male dominated world? And um, she's also been described as, resili as resilient, and because she's overcome various challenges, she was supposed to be like a, a professional ski, mm -hmm. uh, a skier, and she had like a massive accident. I don't know. She did mm -hmm. some shady stuff, to be honest, but she also <laughs> has like some really resilient, uh, resilient personality. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that's one of your students as well, only on the, on the bright side, obviously. Joachim, I will let you start. That was my explanation. That was a long one. No, okay. it's yours. So I'm going to go with Bruce Wayne, with Batman. Good choice. Uh, I think <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned before he makes donations to charity. So he, besides his work that he does as Bat Batman to improve Gottman's, uh, Gottman's lifestyle, True. he also donates to charity. And I think in, in the Master in Finance, we're also trying to um, improve ourselves in different scopes. So as, as I mentioned before about the sustainability and the ethics seminars, we don't only want the economic output, we also want different social and environmental outputs as well. So having a different uh, impact in finance and not the only one that we are um, seem uh, to be attributed as core business. So Bruce Wayne is attributed as Batman, but he also has the philanthropic, philanthropic side and we will have the sustainability and environmental side as well. So. I think this is a, is a quite good connection. Yes, it is. So I will go with the lady. I don't remember the name. The name is Molly Bloom. Molly and, Bloom? And the, the actress <coughs> is Jessica Chastain. I don't okay. know, you can... Okay, so I would go with Molly Bloom. Uh, to go back on the woman and the male-dominated words, uh, I think uh, <laughs> in finance, it's, a, it's also a cliche to say that the words are made by males. Um, I think today there has been a real incentive to open the financial world to women. Um, it has been uh, incentivized by the ESSEC. They really try to force the diversity. There is more and more girls joining the program. It's also really attractive for women too. And also companies are trying to do a lot of efforts. They're doing like women in finance uh, programs. Mm -hmm. They're trying to like really open the scope to women and try to make it available for all the women out there who want to have a career there mm -hmm. to be really welcomed and to understand better this uh, sector. So I would choose her. It's like Gerard said, there is room for everyone. Of course, there is. <laughs> yes, sure. Gérard, what would be uh, your personality? So you are so, so I guess I'm left with the yeah, IMF, yeah, which, which is good. Which is good. <laughs> which is good. <laughs> <laughs> so I would choose the uh, IMF because it gives me actually an excellent opportunity to, to defend a motto that I have, which is uh, 
finance is good for the world, basically. Okay. You know, uh, I've been working in finance for like more than 30 years. And every time I read the press, I, I look at uh, finance is bad and the financial <laughs> market crash and we don't believe the investors and things like that. And people forget something is that uh, l'argent est le nerf de la guerre. All right. Without any financing, uh, well, basically, there will be less economy. With less economy, there will be more poverty. People forget that in the past century, we went from uh, 1 billion inhabitants on Earth to 7 billion. And uh, one century ago, 50% of the people were just dying by hunger. Today, it's just 150 million. It's still too much, basically. Obviously, yes, I get it. But we are making progress. Why are we making progress? Through investments, through development, and financing plays a very important role. So when we, when we people see the Wolf of Wall Street, well, they, they see some <laughs> truths. They see some truths in individual behaviors, but they don't step back and they don't have the, the full picture. Finance is good for the world, and I guess uh, IMF, Again, I'm not talking as uh, for uh, on, on, about the organization as per se, as a well, whole uh, to play in that one. And I think this is very important for uh, basic candidates uh, or students in finance to understand that they are, they are really doing a job which is useful and which is good. This is not only about greed and money, basically finance. This is a job that is also very useful for, for the planet, for the economy, for the society. So there is some truth, but there is no ESSEC truth in it. That's what, that, that's what it would be. After is about knowing what kind of job you will get until or once you've proven that you're resilient and you work hard after now. Hey. Students will have to work hard, prove their resilience. How would you prepare them for the very specific private banking interviews? Uh, have you tried to um, use that private banking? Or? I haven't tried private no. banking. No. Or maybe like any kind of interviews that you've you know with alumni I've heard. Yeah, 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 sure. So alumni, as soon as we start the semester, M1 and M2 students have sessions with them and they prepare us since the first step of developing your CV, developing your motivation mm -hmm. letter towards the final interview that you might have with an MD. So we're quite prepared in this sense, in this regard, uh, for the application process. And a SEC throughout the courses will give you the necessary knowledge to actually implement this preparation. So I think we have the combination of both that makes us uh, excel if you work hard and you're resilient <laughs> in, in, the inter in the application process. So you will arrive fully prepared. Um, what's the alumni network not like? Sorry. Like, so maybe one, uh, yes. one point because yeah, uh, that was an, well, all questions are interesting, but that one I would like to pick it on uh, because this is about organizing a bit uh, how to, to be prepared. And uh, I mentioned economies of scale for large programs. You did. So it's not, you know, like a family driven business where you have a few people taking care of you, uh, one guy in uh, <laughs> career services. It's a full organization. So size enables us to have like partnerships with uh, service providers providing like top level. So I used to work also in a computer environment where you have like service level one, level two, level three. So we have different level of service and uh, we have to mention actually alumni because we are big enough to, to, to basically hire uh, some guys who are really good at when, what they're doing in the, in the market and they perform specialized coaching. So no one has uh, prepared here for private banking, but then you know you will have first level one, general introduction to mm -hmm. finance, coaching, interviews, you know, the basic, and then you will go to specialized stream and with uh, focused providers. This is the benefit of scale, if you wish. Yeah, because as I said like private banking, but I could be like any yes, kind sure, of interview, sure, obviously. Yeah. Sure, sure. I will add to that that it's really something helpful because they arrive at the beginning of the year. And this is really crucial because the beginning of the year is the moment where you're applying to the summer internship for the M2, and you're also applying to the off cycle for the M1. And so having this help, uh, it's a lot. Like you have classes, you have to apply, and at the same time, you have the seminar with alumni. But they're really helping you to understand what is expected from you, from a more like in an interview, in your cover letters, and also from a technical point of view. They're really helping you to access what will be um, asked from you. And so it's, it's really a big help. And so the question I was asking, because you mentioned alumni and you're a lot of puns, and we don't talk about now alumni, obviously. And so what's the alumni network like? You mentioned like how like it was non-competitive, how mm -hmm. everyone has a room, uh, has, there's room for everyone, sorry. 
what would be, yeah, are they like very, I don't know, present? Yes. They really help you still? So, um, for example, with the alumni um, sessions, we also had alumni who came, <laughs> who were uh, previous people who did the master in finance, who went to big companies and came back uh, Saturday morning to explain to us how it went for them, the interviews and everything. So they really take the time to like answer all the questions you could have, also explain their uh, thought process, why they went to this specific company, not another one. Uh, how it went for them, first of all, and then also there's alumni in all the big companies. And this is really a big help because ESSEC is known by those companies. So when you're applying, they already have a picture in mind of the quality that you can be as a student and as a candidate because they have people working there who come from the masters, who come from ESSEC in general. And those people are not only in Paris and in London, they are all around the world. And this is really something strong because you can reach out to them also on LinkedIn you can really try to learn from their experience and have a kind of an insight of their job, what they're doing. And they're like always welcome to like respond to you and have a five, 10, one hour call with you. <coughs> it's really helpful. Joachim, is there anything you want to add to this program? I mean, we've, we've, be, we've been saying how good it was, how perfect it is. Is there anything that you haven't had yet that you would want to add if you could add one thing? So to be completely honest, I am very happy with the program and met my <laughs> expectations. But I don't know, maybe a campus in Brazil. <laughs> oh, campus that in Brazil. Brazil. That would be, a good <laughs> that would be nice. That, I agree with that one. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Especially in Rio, I guess. Or? Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, that <laughs> would, that would, that would, yes. OK, that would be better. And one question before we move to the, the, the extra time. Um, why are you a good director for this program? Ah, the first, I don't know if I'm a good director of the program. Do you want me to uh, But I'm trying, I'm you? trying, oh, I'm okay. trying out because the, I need to also to be resilient, basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what I, what I bring, I think, because I've been teaching at ESSEC for 30 years, but I come from the professional world. I've been working in m and private equity, external development, so I know very well this are, I've been a recruiter for actually uh, recruiting ESSEC, but like a lot of other schools, I've been a lot involved in uh, mentoring students. What I'm trying to do is really to implement a process, basically, to implement processes where, uh, of course, there are human contacts and we share a lot of things, but at the same time, there is a schedule, we know what to do, uh, when to do it, and uh, how to do it, basically, because it comes from the professional world. I don't do research, basically, so I don't get lost in ideas to find new things. I know what, what we want to have, and uh, everyone has a different uh, wish, of course, so it's also customized, but at the end of the day, it's a question of process. Mm -hmm. All right, time flies. We only have time for extra time. Extra times, two minutes left, where you can say, say something that hasn't been said yet, or maybe mention a new thing that you really want to emphasize. Joachim, I will let you start. What would be your conclusion? Maybe you have like another way of concluding, actually. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so my conclusion is, if <coughs> if you actually know that you want to work in finance and you want to pursue a career internationally or especially in Europe, I would strongly suggest to come to a sec. I think with its academic excellence, its diversity, diverse cohort. Within, within the students, you're going to get a great exposure and you're going to learn a lot. So definitely it's a uh, life changer. At yeah. least it was for me, so All right. I strongly recommend. Thank you. Elisa? I completely agree with what Drekin just said. I think it's a career accelerator. I think when you're entering this master, you have a process. It's steps you're taking. For me, it's two years. For him, it's only one year. And at the end, you really see the change in what you will be able to do your entire career. So for me, it's really that's the most important part. All right, thank you, Gérard. Okay, the last words. Okay, last words. The okay, last word. maybe two on points. This show. <laughs> the, the first one is I think uh, can put emphasis on something because when I step back, uh, everyone is international, but we are global. We, ESSEC made a unique choice, you know, to have a presence in Singapore, one in France. It's very different from competition, and at the end of the day, we this is what you get basically. So everyone is international, but we we play global. We are not a European business clone. We, are not, we don't have Europe in our name. We don't have France. The, 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 this is the world. Uh, and one extra word is uh, basically for the, 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 the people, the students, candidates uh, willing to, to join ESSEC. Uh, this is a piece of advice, actually. This is what I learned in my life. And uh, I uh, did a lot of studies, PhD, MBA, and so on. What I learned can be summarized in a very few words. Be prepared. <laughs> when you are prepared, 
you are more likely to be successful. Le hasard ne sert que les gens bien préparés. So this is the piece of advice and this is what we try to implement to ensure that our uh, students are successful. Try to have them be prepared because very often bright people, you know, they think, well, I will do the show. No need to be prepared. <laughs> this is their mistake. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for those kind words, for those words of wisdom. Thank you, Lisa, as well. Thank you, Joachim, for thank answering thank you. all my thank questions, you. for like playing the who am I. Uh, if you're looking in France, MIF, it's like a slang for family. If you're looking for a family, uh, well, it's the MIF, the Master in Finance at ESSEC Business School. If you believe that finance is good for the world, that's why you should apply. Thank you for watching Campus Channel. I'll see you soon.